lawn care lessons. I really love the job DreamWorks did with their animal animation in Kung Fu Panda, and now I have to give Pixar that same praise. No silly fish hands. They're just fish. With eyebrows. And I guess clownfish don't exactly have front-facing eyes, but at least they acknowledge that later. Oh, Disney Pixar, we're taught so much by you through tear-filled eyes. It's no the good dinosaur animation, but it's still beautiful, and the stringy, whimsical score makes you feel right at home. Uh-uh-uh, forgot to brush. Do you want this anemone to sting you? This movie is full of underwater versions of things we do as humans. And the brushing your teeth joke is actually something clownfish do. They rub up against their anemone homes to cover themselves in anemone mucus so they can't be stung by their anemones. Bet you never thought a wind would contain the word mucus. Boy, were you wrong. Well, you know what? If I ever meet a sea turtle, I'll ask him. After I'm done talking to the shark, okay? Shark shadowing and turtle shadowing. Wait to cross. Crosswalk safety. I'm obnoxious. Honesty. Don't tell me to be calm, pony boy. Pony boy? Stay golden, horse man. I never noticed how lovely this score is. It captures Nemo's awe and wonder perfectly. My dad says it's not safe. I know the message is that Marlin needs to ease up a bit, but Nemo's response means that he's actually learned from his dad what is and isn't safe. And also how to deal with peer pressure. Double parenting win. There's nothing to see. I'm gonna go touch the butt! Don't touch the butt! Butt touching courage. Oh no. No. No, it's gone. And this score is great. You can feel and hear the uneasiness. Ha! The reverse taking a breath isn't something anyone would have noticed if it wasn't there, since this is a tense, fast-paced scene. But Pixar isn't going to get called out for animals behaving incorrectly, especially when they're yelling out their children's names. Look out! Oh. Hi, I'm Dory. Let me introduce you to Dory. She's the best. Dory is a win. Like, just everything about her. Win. I forget things almost instantly. It runs in my family. Well, I mean, at least I think it does. Um, hmm. Where are they? So you're telling me that Pixar knew how amazing Ellen would be in plan to have her star in a sequel? Or did they turn a one-off joke into a movie? Either way, finding Dory win. Name's Bruce. Bruce? Like the Jaws robot? Well played. It's about time, mate. We've already gone for the snake. Holy cow. Anchor is Eric Bana, and Chum is Bruce Spence, the gyro captain from Road Warrior. This movie is full of surprises. Hello, my name is Bruce. Hello, Bruce. I'm not saying animated slash cartoon movies haven't offered up jokes for adults in the past. I just think Pixar might be the best at it. And the NAAA gag still works for kids, so they know what's going on. But in a joke, everyone talks. The way the shark smiles dips slightly as he starts explaining the parameters of the joke. Everyone knows you don't explain jokes. And you see why that's funny is that... Wait. <sighs> Another little nod to the adults with blood going up his nose causing pupil dilation. I'm sure they're present in every scene, but the lighting effects are amazing in the darkness of the ocean floor. Very clearly well planned out. Underwater explosions! Nice. <laughs> Take note, kids' movies trying to appeal to adults. If there ever was a way, this is how you do a tasteful fart joke. I know for a lot of you this is Milton from Office Space, but for me, he's William Fontaine de la Tour d'Autrive. And Bill is always a win. God dang it. Voila, he is clean. Taking pride in your work. Rubber dammit clamp installed. I know I keep talking about the voice cast, but we've also got Raymond's brother Robert. Kid, if there's anything you need, just ask your auntie Deb. And Vicky Lewis as Deb makes two news radio actors in this tank. Did I just date myself? And the real star is still hiding. Nobody touch him. A wild Defoe appeared. And man oh man is Willem Defoe always a win. You may not remember that this is the same way Nemo gets stuck in the beginning of the movie. And he responds appropriately after being told, You'll never get out of there yourself. I'll do it. You think you could do these things, but you just can't, Nemo. His whole life. It isn't until Gil makes him fend for himself that he starts believing in himself. I know it's because of a short-term memory loss, but we could all take a lesson from Dory. Sometimes you're just better off singing to yourself and swimming in circles. Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming. I mean, really. If there is any character across all forms of media that we should emulate, it's Dory. And if Shifu was Dustin Hoffman as an animal, this is Ellen DeGeneres as a fish for sure. More pupil dilation and euphoria. Are all fish just recovering addicts of some kind or another? Good feelings gone. But a solid anti-drug message nonetheless. Tronfish! <laughs> oh, shock, you slay me. Shark bait! Shark bait! Ooh, ha, ha. Gnarly frat nickname win! Talking to the lady, not you! Okay, so I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure none of their mouths are moving. Which means these guys talk as a group. And that's teamwork. Lots of legs live in the ocean. Slam! Close enough! Blah, blah, blah. Me, me, blah, 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 blah. I don't usually win mockery, but come on! They really... Nailed him. They'll call him Squishy and he shall be mine. And he shall be my Squishy. 
More nickname wins. A game. A game. A game. A game. Yes. Ah, I love games. Turning life-threatening situations into fun games. Dory. Saving your friend. Crushed by crush. Go on, it'll be a piece of kelp. Heh, <laughs> and easy as algae. All drains lead to the ocean. I feel the need to take a win off here. They don't, kids. Pixar should have known better. I read an interview that said a more appropriate title for flushing your fish hoping they make it back to the ocean would be Grinding Nemo. Don't do it. Phew, more saving your friend. And this is one of the few tense scenes with no comedy outlet. Which is appropriate because it's a real turning point for Nemo. You, mini man, taking on the jellies. Fun fact, Crush is voiced by the director Andrew Stanton, and he was lying down on a couch the entire time to give Crush that laid-back feel. After Marlin's failure to listen to and trust Dory about the Nice trench. He's given his first real parenting Whoa. lesson. Kill the motor, dude. Let us see what Squirt does. The majority of our secondary voice cast are Aussies or Kiwis, and then we have a few Southie lobsters and even some swordfish Brits fencing. Also, a telephone game montage is the fastest way to get word to your son. Mine, mine. Crab foo? Mine! It's gonna be 4,800 teeth! Math lessons. Sharkbait's alive! It's like he's trying to speak to me, I know it! That's the best in English cliche dodge I've ever heard. All right, whoa! You actually sound sick. Maybe louder, huh? <laughs> Don't <laughs> do that! Helen DeGeneres doesn't even care. <laughs> Am I the only one that has a tiny phobia of whales? They're just too big. Nothing should be that big. It's not that bad. It's not like I can't walk into the section of the Museum of Natural History with a giant whale hanging from the ceiling. It's not like that at all. But skeeved out by giant whale is what the film was trying to make you feel. And this is an epic way of accomplishing that. So, when? Don't you people realize we are swimming in our own sh shipwrecks? It'll be okay. No, it won't. Sure it will, you'll see. Optimism. I mean, she's more of an optimist than me. You can't never let anything happen to him. Then nothing would ever happen to him. It sounds like a dumb throwaway, haha, Dory's an idiot line, but it's actually the entire message of this movie. Okay. Dory! He says it's time to let go! And Marlin's control issues are finally put to the test with a figurative and literal chance to let go. The tank is clean! Don Hertzfeld, anyone? Anyone? Just me? Okay, just me then. <laughs> I didn't come this far to be breakfast! Perseverance. Love a duck. Last phrase about the voice cast, but I need to point out that Nigel is voiced by Jeffrey Rush. As in Captain Barbosa. Yeah. Your mind's blown. Hop inside my mouth if you want to live. Terminator reference. Mine. I'm no fool. I know the seagulls are the best part of this movie. I just don't have anything to add. Mine? Tell your dad. I said hi. And even more friend saving. Does Pixar have something against kids who like a little rough play? Sid, now Darla? I'm just kidding, she totally got what she deserved. And, and I, I look at you and I, I'm home. Fighting, back, emotions. I love you, Ellen. You do good work. You let him go! <laughs> Even our one-off characters get entertaining personalities. Mine. <laughs> that lump in the back of your throat? Yeah, that's by design. Everything this movie is about comes together. Marlin finally trusts Nemo enough to let go, and Dory's song takes on a whole new powerful meaning. Also, more teamwork. Sucks to be the fisherman, though. Thousands of dollars of damage done to your boat, lost a net, no catch. Rough day. But they're the villains, right? So, it's alright. With fronds like these, who needs anemones? Someone's gonna have to explain that joke to me. Fish hugging. I love you too, son. And love. Now what? They're, they're good, right? Blow can just pop the bag, right? Right? Phew. What a feel-good movie. Finding Nemo blends our recognizable world with underwater environments and animals better than anyone has before. Don't get me wrong, The Little Mermaid is great, but Pixar's animation style brings a sense of reality to the ocean and its mostly accurately displayed inhabitants. Even the talking fish. From sharks with substance abuse problems, to the frat house initiation, to the EAC being a highway slash skydiving experience, this movie was made for us big kids just as much as the smaller ones. The brightly lit colors please the eye at every turn, even in stressful scenes, and the score is almost out of place it's so good. The creators did not mess around when it came to the authentic sound effects and feel of the underwater world. The character arcs for Nemo and Marlin work separately as well as together. Nemo learns what he's capable of, bum fin and all, and Marlin learns he needs to loosen the leash a bit. And don't get me started on Dory. Okay, do. Her growth throughout the film might be the most heartfelt and tear-jerking of them all, learning that home and family may be the key to her anterograde amnesia. 
Her optimism brings me so much joy. She might be my favorite Pixar character ever. See, monkey has my money. Weak. Yes, I'm a natural blue. Most people caught the let go theme, but even a little deeper, there is a message about letting your children learn from their mistakes and solve their own problems. You didn't think a cartoon would be throwing down the parenting gauntlet, did ya? Nemo never knew what he was capable of until he met Gil. And Gil's detachment style, parenting, I guess, is what Nemo really needed. I love the relationship they build, and I hope they get to meet again. But really, every side character could almost have a movie made about them. Where's my crush riding the EAC and hitting the water movie? Or how about Nigel Goes to Dental School? Or a hard Pixar R with Bruce's relapse? Actually, of all the movies I'd like to see, I really want to know Jacques' backstory. Jacques de la Baguette? Did I miss my true calling? Movie title guy? Hm. Also, Willem Dafoe, man. Just... Willem Dafoe. Let's all go watch Boondock Saints. Even Dory agrees. Oh boy, this is gonna be good, I can tell. Your son Chico? Son Fabio. His son Bingo! Nemo! Nemo! Little Harpo. Hi Elmo! Nemo. Nemo!